thank you very much for coming along today um, in our virtual presentation. And today I'm going to talk to you about vacuum drainage and in particular the EVAC system of vacuum drainage. So just a quick bit about the company themselves. Um, been around one guys or another uh, for several years. The company that we are today um, merged with um, Electrolux and formed in 1975. And I don't want to go too much into the company, but you can see how the company's grown into um, a 150 million euro company a year. And I just like to explain that so people don't think that we're a sort of small company from a shed and we are, you know, uh, a big organisation. And whilst um, EVAC's main business is in the marine industry, where they sit around about 45,000 vacuum toilets a year. Um, it's today, it's about the building systems that I want to talk to you about that I deal with. And currently, EVAC have around about 2,000 uh, buildings fitted with the vacuum system around the world. So, what is a vacuum drainage system? So, it's a drainage system that offers you an alternative method uh, of being able to do this. Um, that gives you guys as designers all sorts of benefits. Uh, firstly, it allows you to transport waste to high level, which means it's extremely flexible. And it offers great water savings, which in today's buzzword means it's massively environmentally friendly. And I'll explain why a little bit further. And the pipe work we use is significantly smaller than traditional pipe work. So where you're used to be using 100 mils, 150 mil, four inch, six inch pipe work, uh, we use pipe work from just 32 millimeter and really don't use anything larger than 75. So routing pipe work um, at high level where you get, you get the flexible advantage of being able to lift up to high level, you also get the flexible advantage of having to route much smaller pipes. So what exactly is it? Well, like I've said, it offers you a method of being able to drain a building without having to rely on traditional gravity and or pumps, that thus giving you the flexibility to put things anywhere you want in a building. This also allows for uh, uh, ease of remodeling and being able to add and omit things to the system. And like I said before, this isn't new. We've been around a long time, it's been developed and in, in situ now for well over 50 years. So it means that you can defy the conventional methods and restrictions that normal gravity trains will bring. And if you look at the two slides we've got on there, we've got our EVAC solution onto the one side and our gravity solution, which you'll all recognize to the left. And straight away, we can see that looking at the picture on the left, that the vacuum system there negates the need for any traditional stack. And as you can see from that picture, there is no stack. We are actually taking the pipes from high level down to where our vacuum plant is indicating the blue there at a convenient position not having to rely on where the stack is. So thus giving you that complete design freedom. And again, it's not something we made up. It's all in situ with the European standard EN12109, which is for vacuum drainage inside buildings. So why would you want to use it? So vacuum drainage, uh, we always say, has developed into a get me out of a problem product. And I often say, I can't use gravity because, or designers will be saying, I can't use gravity because, because why? Well, because potentially your floor is reinforced and it will not allow any excavation. Um, there's a limited time program that won't allow you to, to, to take the additional time to excavate into the floor. Uh, quite common now, buildings are leased and the landlord will want the building back in the uh, in the fashion that he sold it to you. Or you might be working in a section of the building and you can't penetrate the floor below because you have only taken the fourth floor and the third floor and the fifth floor are other tenants. So there's no way you can go into those areas. It could be something to do with the foundations. It could be to do with water tables. It could be that you want the design freedom to be able to put sanitary items wherever you want that you can't when you're restricted to traditional gravity systems. You don't want to rely on pumps and you want to save water. So all sorts of reasons why you might want to consider a vacuum, a vacuum drainage system. 
So what we can see is that we have a series of pipes that connect each appliance back to our collection tank. And the pipe work here, shown in the black, is under a constant negative pressure or a vacuum. And as the, uh, the, the water will travel through small bore pipe work under a vacuum, it means that it will travel of speeds up to 10 meters per second. So one question that I often get, and particularly when you look at the next point, that we can actually lift up to six meters, if you've got a pipe that's only 50 millimetres or 63 millimetres, surely it's going to block up. Well, actually, blockages in vacuum pipes happen a lot less often than they do in traditional gravity pipes because of that speed that it travels through. And when it makes its way back to the collection tank that you can see at the bottom there, we often have to, during service, open the tank and take out the things that have got all the way through the toilet, a 50 mil pipe, and back into the tank. And we are, our service engineers at that point are removing items such as clothing, towels, all sorts of things that you wouldn't believe would make their way through a 50 mil pipe and back to the tank. But that's the power of vacuum and it forces it back all the way through. And uh, because the pipes are taken up to a high level, it mean, and, and positioned in the ceiling voids, it means that all of the underground drainage is, elim is eliminated. Uh, and as I pointed out in one of the uh, features before, saving you a potential reduction time in your installation. And pipe work at high level is only on a very gradual form, very shallow. So this means, or this enables you to have very long runs at high level. Uh, if you can imagine you had a gravity pipe and you had to say run 50 meters and you're running on a one in 40 one in 60 the actual drop in infer over that would be would be sort of uh, you know non-conducive for you but with a vacuum pipe and only running it at one in 200 makes you uh, enables you to keep your pipe working very tight compartments and run for very long distances so what we can see on this uh here is a, uh, a, a, a video of our discharge valve opening and closing. And when it says there that the valve opens and causes atmospheric pressure to flow through the pipework, I think it's always best described is if you imagine you had a room and the room was under a vacuum, so you'd taken all the air out of the room. Now what happens is you open the door and air would rush in and fill that void because that's the physics of what happens when um, pressurised or, or atmospheric air reaches a vacuum. And that inrush of air would be so great that if you were standing in the doorway when you did this, you'd be thrown off your feet and thrown into the room. And the discharge valve or the evac valve that you can see on the slide currently indicates that. It means that when we open that valve, it's the equivalent of us opening the door, the room which is under a vacuum uh, is, is emulated by our pipe work. So when a toilet is flushed, a vacuum toilet is flushed, it's not actually being sucked away. It's around about 60 or 70 litres of air that rushes into the bowl and anything that's in the way gets pushed through, through the pipe work, hence why you're able to then lift up to heights of six metres and also have the flow rate of 10 metres a second through the pipe work. And once that water has passed through the discharge valve, it's then flowing through the pipework and making its way back down to the collection plant or the vacuum plant, which is located on the lowest part of our system. And what we're going to see here is now a quick animation of everything that I've just been explaining to you. So we've got here a, an x-ray of the building, if you like. We're going to see Toilet flush, now comes our slug of water, rises up to high level. Now, I just want to stop the video there at that point, because what we can see there in the pipe work looks like a trap, looks like an inline trap. And what that is actually is we call a transport pocket. And we have these transport pockets in our high level pipe every 25 to 30 metres, and they serve two main purposes. Firstly, I explained a short while ago that the pipe work is running on a 1 in 200 fall. 
and said that you could have very long runs of, of pipe work kept in a tight compartment. Well, what happens is when we reach a distance of 25 to 30 metres of our pipe running at high level, we install a transport pocket like this. And one of the functions of the transport pocket is, is it lets you regain any lost inverts. So, for example, if we've lifted up out the back of a vacuum sort at three metres and we then start running at high level, by the time we reach the position of the transport pocket, we may be at 2.8 because the invert we've lost. By installing the transport pocket, we then step back up to three metres and start running again. So you then get the pipe on a sawtooth effect, helping keeping it in that tight compartment. The, so the depth of that doesn't matter, it will vary to suit the design? It would be to suit the design, yes, because um, one of the other points I was going to make is that you can sometimes install a transport pocket um, when you've not reached 25 to 30 metres, you might want one after 15 metres. Why might you want one after 15 metres? Well, I said the system's flexible. So if you've got a piece of ductwork that's crossing your pipe and it's clashing with your uh, vacuum main, you can install a transport pocket there. So whereas a standard pocket may just be two fittings butted together, if you've got a step underneath a piece of ductwork, you might need to make it deeper and longer to enable you to do that, all coming back into the, um, the, the, the flexible solution that vacuum systems offer. Um, the other reason for having the transport pocket there is as, the, uh, as we saw the slug of water rising up the, um, uh, lifting up the riser pipe, it was in a nice tight slug of water. And as it reaches the virtually horizontal, it's a one in 200 fall, so it's virtually horizontal, pipe work at high level, the slug of water will begin to flatten out and elongate and my 60 to 70 litres of air that's pushing it will pass over the top of it and leave it behind. So the 1 in 204 keeps the water moving and if it loses its inertia it will sit down and reform as a complete slug of water in the bottom of the transport pocket just like where I've frozen it there and then when the next burst of air comes along that will then crash into a complete slug of water and then transport it onto the next pocket or if I um, continue to run the, uh, the slide onto the next transport pocket or back down to the vacuum on the lowest level. So we just started this again. So we're going to see our toilet flush. Here comes our water up to high level. It's run 25 to 30 metres. It's lost its inertia. It's waiting there. Now comes the next burst of air from another toilet flush. And that water is now making its way down in a rather sort of, see, still flexible solution down to the vacuum plant at the lowest level. And like I said, we don't have to lift up. What we've done for this toilet, you see, we're flushing and running this at low level or high level. Or below, you can see here how we've done slightly transformation to be able to step around structural limitations, structures that, that we may come up. With. So, anybody have any questions at that point? Silence tells me I shall move on. So we come to the vacuum toilet itself. I've spoken about the theory of it, and I've spoken about how the uh, water um, travels through the pipe. So the actual toilet itself is the only specialist piece of sanitary ware that um, is on the vacuum system. It looks like a normal toilet, and I'm, I'm always eager to say this because most people, when you explain that you work in the vacuum industry, will immediately draw their mind to the transport sector and a stainless steel toilet or a Teflon toilet that shoots out blue water and goes a bit of a pop when you flush it. So as you can see from the, uh, the photograph there, it's a white porcelain toilet, looks like a normal loo, but I say all the mechanical parts of it are concealed within the confines of the bowl. And it's important to say that no electrical connections are needed to power our toilet. So, and, and, and is it only wall hung? It, it can't be um, on the on the floor. No, we do we do both varieties. We do the wall mounted, 
the the reason we 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 uh, promote the wall mounted as our, um, our, our key pan, if you like, is that you can see there from this slide actually all the components are are, con are concealed within the pan. And if you needed to get to one of those components with the wall mounted toilet, it's undoing two two nuts. The bowl slides off its studs, and then everything there is accessible. You can work on it, and when you put it back on, it's, it's I always say it's like a uh, pit stop type um, uh, arrangement because you can put the bowl back on, and then the seal that goes round the bowl to the wall is part of our supply. It's like a, it's, we call it a ceiling ring. It's like a big white elastic band that, when put into position, looks like it's been seal it. It looks like it's mastic, but it isn't. You just put a screwdriver and you lift it off. So putting it back on, it makes it a nice, clean transition to, to remove a pan, do some maintenance, and put it back in. With the floor-mounted bowl, um, because you can't have that sealing ring because the bowl touches the floor, so you actually have to finish it off with a sealant or with a mastic. So we normally promote... Um, uh, floor mounted toilets where you can have um, rear access so you can get round to the back of the toilet and service corridors and things like that without having to take the bowl off it's not impossible to do it but it just makes it a lot easier with the uh, with the wall mounted version okay yeah understand understand so uh, looking at the components inside the toilet, um, we have our discharge valve, our water valve, control mechanism, flushing ring. Now the discharge valve is the valve that opens and draws the water away. So I used the analogy earlier on in the presentation talking about opening the door to our room. It's the discharge valve that opens, that, 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 that allows air to pass through. We don't have a toilet system on this. We have a direct water feed and that connects through our water valve. So our water valve opens, um, allows water into the bowl, our discharge valve opens, and that draws the waste out of the bowl. The water is delivered into the bowl through the flushing ring. Now, it looks like it sits in the top of the pan. It does, but it's actually concealed under the rim of the bowl, so you don't see it. And the last part there, the control mechanism, is our switch, if you like, everything that, that controls all of the operations of all those individual parts. So one big advantage of the vacuum toilet, or one of the environmental advantage of the vacuum toilet, is that the toilet only uses 1.2 litres of water per flush. And I put there, the toilet, I am just mentioned it a moment ago, the toilet doesn't have a system and is ready to flush again. So someone said to me, well, why would you need to flush the toilet again straight away? You know, do, do you not get a, a clean flush the first time? You do. But let's think about a um, public area, um, something like a railway station where someone comes out the toilet. As soon as someone comes out, the next person's going in. And you'll find sometimes that um, with, with, with plumbing and, and flow rates, the assistant can take a couple of three minutes to fill up to the point where it needs it's, it's ready to flush again. And if the person's only in there a minute or so and then they can't flush the toilet, they're walking away. They're not waiting for that, that system to refill, which then means the next person's going in and then going into a dirty environment. So with the vacuum toilet, you flush the toilet and the flush takes about two and a half seconds to, 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 to go through. And as soon as you've done that, bang, the toilet's ready to go again, if needed. Um, so uh, the, for the person who just shouted out about the, uh, do we do it in the wall mounted, there's a variety of sanitary wear that's available, urinals, bead days as well, that all fits in, particularly if you're doing a, uh, a hotel project and need ma matching sanitary wear. Um, so because the um, toilet only uses 1.2 litres per flush, I like to throw this little slide in to show potential water savings. So public toilets flushing 10 times an hour. Seems an awful lot, but that's only once every six minutes. And if you go through a railway station in rush hour, it can be a lot more than that. And let's do a quick comparison with toilet, 20 toilet, a 20 toilet system flushing 10 times an hour at the 1.2 litres that a vacuum toilet uses, 
and at six litres that a conventional toilet uses. And what some people often say to me, well, conventional toilets don't use six litres now, they use uh, four and a half litres, they use three litres. My general answer to that is, yeah, you're going to a toilet that has a dual flush button. And you say to someone, so what's the, the, the low flush? Is it the big button? Is it the little button? Most people don't tend to know. I know that um, in my house, people just push both buttons at the same time. So I think it's fair to say a lot of flushes are flushed at six litres. So when you do the sums there and omit what the uh, vacuum toilet will uh, only use, you can see there we're using or we're saving nearly a cube of water per hour. And added up over a period of 100 days, that's enough to fill an Olympic swimming pool, which is a huge amount of water. And if you add up all the evac toilets in the world, it's saving an immense amount of water a year compared to that of gravity toilets. So let's have a little look at how one works. I'll run this through a couple of times. Use the push is a push button, and all they're doing is sending a pneumatic signal into our activator. This then operates the two valves. We see the water valve deliver the water and the discharge valve take the water away and the toilet refills. And that's around about real time. So that toilet is actually ready to uh, flush again. And if I can um, just run that through again so you can see it happen. Because this is just sending a pneumatic signal down, it means most pneumatic buttons on the market will work if that button that's provided isn't to your taste. And we can see our two valves operating. It looks like a lot of water, but it's just 1.2 litres that's being delivered into that bowl. And that's your, your flush over. So um, a question that has been asked right me over the years when we say that the vacuum toilet is the only piece of sanitary wear that you have to use. It's uh, what happens if the evac toilet is not to your taste because I said we do a wall mounted version and we do the floor standing version. But there isn't a massive a range uh, available. You know, it, it, it's, it's, there's two wall mounted, there's two floor mounted. And um, if you're doing maybe a, uh, a five star hotel, there might be a different toilet you want to use. You want it to use other appliances because not every vacuum system we do, the whole building is necessarily vacuum. I'm about to do a hotel in Liverpool where um, it's, it's five floors and only half of the first floor is going to be on vacuum. And the reason that half of the floor is going to be on vacuum is that part sits above a weather spoons. And Weatherspoon will not allow them to come down into their into their domain and run gravity drainage through. So just this one particular section is going to be on vacuum, and they want the whole building, all five floors, whether it's on the 